In today's video, we are going to be going over the amazing topic of the force of friction. Now, don't forget, before we go any further, to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, click on the notifications bell, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can subscribe, you can share, you can comment, you can give me a thumbs up, and you can also link to a bunch of other videos in the upper right-hand corner that I made about the force of friction and Newton's second law and calculating acceleration and all that kind of fun stuff. But this is the force of friction. The force of friction is the force exerted by a surface on an object as it moves across it, as it moves across that surface, or as it makes an effort to move across that surface. Okay, now you can see that as it moves or as it makes an effort. So really there's two kinds of friction. There's two types of friction, of course. There is static friction. That is the force of friction that is applied on an object as you apply a force to get it to move before it starts moving. Then there's the force applied by the surface when the object is actually moving. Okay, so it's kind of the one is in the first case where the object is not moving and the second case is where it is moving because the static friction is the force you have to overcome to get something moving. If you push something, something big, large, heavy, massive, a car, a big table, a big chair, a big box, it doesn't start moving right away because static friction is keeping the object from actually moving. And you have to overcome that static friction, as we'll talk about in just a moment when we do an awesome example to show you what we mean by the difference between static and kinetic friction. But kinetic friction is the force from the surface that opposes the motion of the object when the object is actually moving. So first you have to get it moving and then it starts moving. The static friction keeps the thing from moving, but once it gets moving, then it's the kinetic friction that's kind of like trying to slow it down. Now, we'll talk about the coefficient of friction and do a good example, but you should remember that static friction, the force of static friction is usually greater than the force of kinetic friction which we'll show you in this wonderful diagram that I put together, this graph here. Okay, this graph has kind of two sections. It has the static friction section when the object is not moving. So here the object is not moving, and here kinetic friction is when the object is actually moving. This graph shows you the relationship between the force applied, the applied force, which is given in Newtons, and the force of friction, the friction force, which is also given in Newtons. And like I said, this section, the object is not moving. That's why it's called static friction. And in this case, the force of friction static is going to be equal to the applied force. So when you push, let's say you have a large object and you push with a force of 10 Newtons, then the force of friction pushes back with 10 Newtons because the object is not moving. Let's say you push a little harder. Let's say you push with 15 Newtons. Well, the object is still not moving, so therefore the static friction is also going to be, the force of friction for static is also going to be 15. Now you're going to push a little bit harder and we're going to be getting up to 30 newtons. And now the object is still not moving. So as you increase the applied force, the friction force, the force on that object to keep it from moving also increases. And they're equal to each other. There's a linear relationship here. But at some point, you're going to overcome the friction force static, the maximum static friction force, and then that object will start moving. So for example, in this case, the maximum force, the maximum uh, friction force, static force, is about 35 newtons. So if you push with 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and then you get up to 35, and over 35, for example, 40, that in this case, the kinetic friction force is going to be about 28, I said. Now, this kinetic friction and this maximum static friction force depend on the coefficients of friction, the static coefficient and the kinetic. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. We're going to do an excellent example, as I mentioned. But if we push harder, 55, then the object will be moving now because we've overcome the static friction force and we have a force that's greater than the kinetic friction force. So the object will be moving, it will be accelerating. But you'll notice that in general, the kinetic friction force does not increase, okay, over kind of normal conditions. So even if you push, let's say, with 70 newtons, then the friction force kinetic will be also be 28. So it does not change, okay? 
So that kind of shows you the relationship between the static when the object is not moving force and the kinetic friction force when the object is actually moving. You can see that the maximum static friction force is greater than the kinetic friction force because you ought to, you've got to overcome that maximum static force to get the object moving in the first place. Okay, friction, we say like to say just simply that is the force that opposes the motion of an object. So if you push in one direction, then the friction force pushes in the opposite direction. It's kind of the opposite direction of the applied force, or we sometimes say the opposite direction of the motion of the object. Now, if you push and the object's not moving, that means that this applied force is less than that maximum static friction force. But if you overcome the maximum static friction force, then the object will start moving like that in that direction. Okay? Now, how it accelerates and how much it, its velocity changes will depend on the difference between the applied force and the kinetic friction force. Now, where does that friction force actually come from? Because, look, I put this object here and I have the surface and they look pretty smooth. But if you look very carefully, they're not really that smooth. Okay, an object may look smooth, but it's not really that smooth. And it's kind of rough if you look carefully, look very closely. And it's those little edges and corners and bumps and things like that that get hooked onto each other. I kind of think of it as like Velcro, if people know what Velcro is these days. But it's like Velcro, and those two edges get caught on each other, and those two edges get caught on each other. And that is the force. That's where the force comes from. Because if you apply a force in that direction, that object doesn't want to move right away. And the force of friction comes from the interaction of those two surfaces, kind of the sticking together of those two surfaces. All right, And the friction force opposes the applied force. And from that friction force and from those two surfaces rubbing together, we get like sound and heat and vibration. Okay, Some of the energy is lost when you push those two objects past each other. Now, the amount of friction between two surfaces is described by something that we call the coefficient of friction, and we give it this cool little symbol, mu. It's one of the letters in the Greek alphabet, mu, M-U. Okay, now what is the coefficient of friction? Now, the coefficient of friction kind of describes the amount of friction between two surfaces. The higher the coefficient of friction, okay, the higher the friction force will be. Okay, it describes how much the two surfaces stick together. Now, those are kind of the same things, all right? But that's another way of saying You think of those two surfaces sticking together as those edges and those little things get stuck on each other. All right, it depends on what the two surfaces are made of. So every two surfaces has a different coefficient of friction, which I'll give you an example of some in just a moment. And generally, it's a number between 0 and 1. It has no units, as we'll talk about, because you're dividing force by force. You get no units. Now, here are some examples of the static the friction of the friction uh, coefficient static and the coefficient of friction kinetic. So if you have, like, ice, ice is kind of slippery, not a lot of friction. On steel, it depends what kind of steel, but basically the coefficient, the static coefficient of friction is 0 0.04, and that's pretty low. And if once it's moving, it's going to be less, so that's about 0 0.01. Now, what about wood? Wood is a little rougher, so to speak, has more friction, so the static coefficient of friction is 0 0.45. And once you get those two pieces of wood moving, then the kinetic coefficient of friction is going to be less, and it's about 0 0.32. Now, this, of course, all depends on what kind of wood you have and what, how, how much you've sanded the wood and all that other kind of stuff. But this is for wood on wood, and I think this was supposed to be oak on oak. Now, you want to have a lot of friction with your car tire on the asphalt. So this is pretty low. This is kind of in the middle. And the static coefficient of friction for your car tire, the rubber on asphalt, is 0 0.90. And the kinetic coefficient of friction, which is a little less, you still want to have enough stick between you and the road, enough friction so you don't go sliding away, is 0 0.75. Like that. Okay? So that's what the coefficient of friction is. Now we're going to use that in an example in just a moment. But here's how we actually calculate. This is the equation we use to calculate the force of friction. The force of friction is equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. Okay, This Fn is not the net force. This is the normal force. All right, You have to know what the normal force is. Of course, I've made videos for the normal force too. You can check those out. What do each of those things mean? Well, that's the friction force. Ff is the friction force, which is measured in newtons. Then the coefficient of friction, it has no units, 
But remember, there's two coefficients of friction. There's one for static, before the object starts moving, and there's one for kinetic, while the object is moving. So if you use the static, then you get the static friction force. If you use the kinetic coefficient of friction, then you're going to get the kinetic force but of friction, but it's always times the normal force. Okay, the normal force is, of course, the normal force, which is measured in newtons. So that's what we need to know about calculating the force of friction. But you're also interested to think about, well, how do we calculate the coefficient of friction? Because sometimes you'll be asked to calculate the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is simply the friction force divided by the normal force. So you've got to know those two things to calculate the coefficient of friction. Now, it's interesting to notice here that the coefficient of friction, the amount of friction between two surfaces, has only to do with the force of friction, okay, and the normal force. It has nothing to do with how big the surfaces are, the area that's in contact. It doesn't really matter how much of the area there is of the two surfaces. You don't need that to calculate the coefficient of friction. Now, here is an example. Okay, we're going to talk about an example here, which uses both the kinetic and the static coefficient of friction. We have a box that's 15 kilograms. It's sitting motionless on a floor. The coefficient of static friction between that box and the floor, US, mu s, is 0 0.40. The coefficient of kinetic friction, once we get it moving, is UK, mu k, is 0, 0,30. It's less. We want to determine the force of friction and the acceleration of the box when the following forces are applied to the box. So we have here... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five different applied forces, and we want to know the acceleration and the friction force. All right, now let's just uh, draw a little free body diagram so we get oriented here. Take a moment. We have the force of gravity, which points down. We have the normal force, which points up. And generally, when I'm drawing free body diagrams for these problems, I don't worry about the size of the arrows, but we're going to assume the force applied is to the right, and that means the friction force is applied to the left. Now, sometimes people will draw it like this. Sometimes people will draw the friction force like down here. I like to put it here. But this is the friction force, the friction between these two surfaces like that. Now let's think about what we know already from our studies of Newton's second law and things like that about these forces. You should remember that the force of gravity is calculated as m, the mass of the object, times g, 9.81 meters per second, the acceleration due to gravity. Now you should also remember from the problems that we've done is that the normal force is going to be equal to the force of gravity. So that's generally how we figure out what the normal force is. We calculate gravity and then gravitational force, and then we set it equal to the normal force. And when we calculate the friction force, it's the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. And we know that the friction force is going to be equal to the applied force as long as where the applied force is less than the maximum friction static force. The maximum force of friction static, as long as it's less. All right? Now, let's go on and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, here is the information that we have, and we want to know what's going to be the friction force for all these applied forces. All right? Now, remember that we want to know, first of all, what is going to be the maximum friction force static. In order to calculate that, we have to use the coefficient of friction static times the normal force. Well, we're given the static coefficient of friction but we don't know the normal force. And we need the normal force to figure out how much force do we need to apply to actually get this thing moving in the first place. We have to know the maximum static friction force. So you remember, we know we don't know the normal force, but we do know the mass, and we do know that the normal force is going to be equal to the gravitational force, and that the gravitational force is calculated as mg. So we can calculate the gravitational force as 15 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, and we get that the force of gravity is equal to 147 newtons. Well, for an object that's sitting on a surface and not moving up or down, just sitting there, we have to we know that this force is equal to this force. These forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. They're balanced in the y direction. So the gravitational force and the normal force are equal to each other, or the normal force is equal to the gravitational force. So the gravitational force is 147 newtons, and the normal force is 147 newtons. Okay, now we can calculate the maximum force static to get this object moving. 
we take the coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.40. We multiply that times the normal force, and that means that in order to get this object moving in the first place, we have to apply a force of at least 59 newtons. Now that means up here, for all of these forces, 0, 5, 25, 55, all of those are below 59 newtons. So that means in each case, we know that the applied force and the friction force are going to be equal to each other. The friction force will be equal to the applied force. And in that case, we're using static friction and the object is not moving. There's no acceleration. Okay? Now, but this force, 65, is greater than the maximum. So now we got to figure out the friction force using our kinetic coefficient of friction, which we'll do on the next page. All right? So we know that the force of friction kinetic, when the object is moving, because we know we have this force is greater than the maximum, which was 59 newtons, is the kinetic coefficient of friction, which is less than the static, times the normal force. So in that case, the normal force we know is 147, because we calculated that on the previous page. It's the same object, 15 kilograms. Then the, co then the friction force kinetic is... 0 0.30 times 147, and that means that the friction force is 44 newtons. All right? Now, that means 44 newtons. That's less than the applied force, so the object is going to be accelerating. It's going to be accelerating in the x direction. So in this case, it's going to be moving because this one, this force, excuse me, yeah, this force is greater than the maximum static friction force. So let's calculate the acceleration. Now, to calculate the acceleration, we use Newton's second law, F equals ma. That means a is equal to F divided by m, and this F is really the net force on those two, on that object. Okay, and we know that the net force is the difference between these two. Okay, we talked earlier, the gravitational force and the normal force are equal and opposite. The object is not moving in the y direction, the object is moving in the x direction, and the net force is the difference between the applied force, which is 65, and the friction force, which is 44, which 65 minus 44, I hope, is 21. I think it is. That means the acceleration is going to be 21 newtons. That's the net force divided by the mass, 15 kilograms. And the acceleration is going to be 1.4 meters per second squared. Okay, so there you go. That is, maybe not a brief, but that is an overview of the force of friction, where the friction force comes from, the graph of kinetic and static friction, where the friction force comes from, and how to calculate uh, the force of friction using the kinetic and the static coefficients of friction. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it very helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video. You can leave a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Don't forget sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.